Welcome to the broadcast. My name is John Mayfield, the Real Estate Tech Guy, and thanks for joining us on another study session for Global Real Estate School students. And of course, uh, we welcome anyone if you're with another real estate school. I hope, hopefully you are joining us as well. So thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. I am going to very quickly make sure that we are broadcasting loud and clear. And so let me go out to help me pass the real estate exam.com and it looks like I am broadcasting loud and clear and so I can also um, take a look at any messages that come in so if you want to leave a message you can do that a little bit later and I'm just trying to see there we go I'll bring the chat box up here so I'll go out and check that from time to time if you write something in and I don't go out to look at it immediately uh, don't panic we'll come back and take a look and make sure we answer any questions you have so I'm going to minimize that for right now and um, come back over to you so I'm gonna actually bring us over to the um, to the dashboard here but um, first, I just want to say thanks for signing up with Global Real Estate School. I appreciate your business and always uh, excited to help. I have not been getting a lot of, um, a lot of people seem to be going through the course without a lot of hangups. There have been a few of you, I understand, that have had some issues with things kind of um, hanging up occasionally. And a lot of times, and I just kind of wanted to go over a few of those things with you tonight, keep in mind that regardless of what state you are in, whether it's South Dakota, we're, we're in Indiana, Oklahoma, Missouri, Kansas, all of the real estate commissions for an online school require that the modules are timed. And so uh, that is the reason the videos and so forth are, are timed and you can't move forward until the video ends. Now, occasionally, if your internet was to have a drop-in signal or service, the system, because you are inside what's called a learning management system, it thinks you've left the classroom. And so it's kind of like a teacher that's monitoring you. And what's really weird is if you're surfing, I have people all the time that will say, no, my internet's fine. There's nothing wrong with my internet. A lot of times your router can go off for a brief moment. And if it does that, the learning management system again is monitoring the classroom and it says, hey, wait a minute, Mayfield just left the classroom. Well, your internet may have gone out for just a brief moment and that sometimes forces the video to the timing to go back to the beginning. Sometimes it doesn't if it's just a brief moment. And so weird things can get clogged up inside your internet cache, uh, which is, you know, I don't want to get too deep in the technical terms. Um, but anyway, the best way to do that is to log out. And if you have another device, log back in through another device like your phone or, or uh, a tablet. And sometimes you can go push yourself through. If not, I'm always here and, and you guys know that. And so just reach out to me and we can take care of that. So I just wanted to mention that. But so far, a lot of people have been um, like finishing the course and I'm... I sometimes there for a while I felt like I was just troubleshooting and a technical support because I switched some things over but lately it's been going great so I, I hope that's the case and and again it's technology so just have patience if something doesn't have uh, happen just right make sure that all of the timer buttons finish at the bottom but again I'm always here if you need help so thanks for that um, and then, then I found out another thing that's my uh, for some of you who are new students um, and you didn't get your credentials like immediately the company I use changed an API key which is again very technical and I, I found that out tonight I finally called them and said what's going on I have people signing up and it's not sending them it's not registering them into the course and I'm having to do it manually, but we have that fixed as well. So hopefully things will be going smoothly. And then had a 
Um, just kind of a terrible family uh, emergency this past week. Uh, my daughter, Allie, who helps me here at this school and who was also pregnant with our second grandchild, uh, unfortunately um, had some, some health issues with her appendix. And, and so it's kind of been a tough week for us and, and uh, keep her in your prayers. We, we, we lost our little grandson and had the service yesterday and it's really tough on her and on all of us because, um, you know, we were really excited um, to have our second little grandson. But um, sometimes things like that happen and uh, the doctors just said because the appendix had burst that uh, sometimes the baby just has to, to leave the womb to, uh, to help the mother survive. So it was a, it was a real scary moment for us um, because Alex was not doing very well at all but she is doing better and and um, we're kind of getting back through through all of this so the last two weeks it's just since Thanksgiving my life's kind of been turned upside down so we're back to do doing another live streaming and uh, again thank you for your thoughts and concerns but uh, we're going to get through that get through all of this so well, I thought tonight what I wanted to do was go over some terminology with you. Uh, terms are very important, so I'm going to kind of pull up the flashcards, and I thought what we would do is just um, go through some of the flashcards with you, and I'm going to show you where you can get those and download those on your, uh, on your computer from the dashboard, and then... Um, you know, I'll kind of go through some of the uh, definitions and we may go through some of these quickly if it's like, hey, you're not probably going to see that on the test. I'll tell you that. But uh, so tonight's going to be all about terminology. If you're new in the class, it's OK. Take some notes. Hopefully you have a notepad and uh, a pen and you can take some good notes and we'll go through these and I'll try to give you key trigger um, terms and ways to remember some of these for the definition. So let me go over here to the dashboard and you can see here I'm logged in as a student. Now I'm going to have a lot more courses than what you have in your, in your system. Uh, remember that you can always come up here to the home button uh, or the course library you can see that it'll give you these. For some reason, that was the other question I needed to ask Litmus, is I don't know why it's adding some of these other courses in your, in your course library. Um, so you, you wanna stay in the state that you're working on. So if you're in the Missouri 48 hour, and I'm just gonna pull that up, I wanted to show you that right here under the additional references, this is where you can download the flashcards right here. Now, uh, there's, there's a PowerPoint, which is what I'm going to be using in a PDF version. So let me show you the difference between the two. If I downloaded this into a PDF version, uh, and I would do this on my phone. I would log in to the site on your phone, but you can see here that this is the way it looks on the PD, PDF version. What's interesting, and I'll be showing you this um, on, the, on my iPad, but this is the PowerPoint version, and what's, you can put this on your phone, even if you have an Android or a mobile, if you have an iPhone, it'll, you can pull this up in Keynote, and then you can just actually hit a little play button and what's really cool is you can touch your finger anywhere on the screen and it will give you these right on your phone. So if you want to go backwards, you can, you can do that as well. And you can see we can go forward. So what's really neat about having these on your phone is that you can study when you're out, out and about. So sometimes I go... I love to go with my wife when she goes shopping, but sometimes I'm not much of a shopper. And if I find a place I can sit down somewhere, I, you know, get on my phone. Well, if you want to, uh, if you're at work or you're on lunch break or wherever you are, if you want to pull your phone out, you can do some studying right from your phone. So 
Um, this is the PowerPoint version. And again, there's a PDF version. Either one of those are fine. And you can, uh, again, just go to log in from your phone, from your internet browser or your iPad. And then you want to go to the additional references tab. Okay. So does it matter if you're in Indiana? It should be there. Additional references. I've got to put those in the Indiana. I just added Indiana to our, we'll make sure Kansas has those. And I thought I had those there. So we'll get those added for all of you guys. My apologies. Uh, we just added these li course libraries. So I'll get those added before, once we're finished here. So we've got a bunch of South Dakota folks on the course. Uh, so again, I would just go to additional references. I got to get those added for you too. I am so sorry. But uh, that's where you would find those under the additional references. Now, I do have some other, um, some other mod, some other information for you here. You can see uh, down below there's practice exams review modules. I think I know what the problem is. You have to go inside the course and there's the flashcards. So they're there. I was not inside the course. That's, that's what happened. I feel better now about that. We'll go back to Indiana because I'm pretty sure I have those course library. We'll try Kansas additional references and see this little arrow here so yeah i've got them there they're all there Whew. i feel better now but here's what i wanted to show you too i have other additional um, stuff that's here for you for example there's the kansas law book kansas agency disclosure so all of that information's there now this is the other thing i wanted to point out you have all of your review modules here so remember that the review modules and the practice exams, there's no additional resources here. So if I go over here to courses, you can see the review modules. Don't forget, these are all unlocked. This is where you would want to do your reviewing. Had one of my students the other day, she went through the whole course and then she wanted to go back and review and she started opening up chapters in the course and then she couldn't f go forward to finish her final exam. Well, you, you do not want to review in the main course. This is the main course right here. You would want to close this, go over to courses, close this arrow. Here's the practice course you don't do until after you pass the test and then go into the review modules right here. And the review modules are where you want to review because they are unlocked. Okay. So which means unlocked, I can jump around anywhere I want to in the course. There, there's no set order. In the main course, you cannot do this, okay? But if you want to just jump all the way down and go back through the exam, you can do that right here in the review side, okay? So always do your review from the review modules. And so these are located down below. However, the practice exams are where you can also do retake many of the test questions. And I have lots of questions that are not in the course in this area right here. Okay. Now here's the key. So I want you to pay attention here. Do, do not hit resume whenever you go back into the practice exams. Hit restart because that flushes out all of your answers and it will actually make, uh, it'll, it will allow you to take the questions again uh, as if you've never taken them. If you select resume, 
it's not going to flush all the answers out until you hit retake the course. So if you hit resume and you go back and you say, I want to do chapter three again, you'll go in and say, wait a minute, my answers are chosen. What's going on here? Why can't I retake this? Well, it's because you did not hit restart. So every time you go into the practice exams, hit restart, and that'll flush all of your answers out and give you a clean slate to work with, okay? Just wanted to make sure that everybody was uh, with me on that, so. Okay, so that's your practice exams. And don't forget, there are a lot of questions that are not in the main course. So again, notice how you're going to see a lot of content. Just close your little arrows there. And then we have the real estate math made easy, which is just some recap of some video. I'm getting ready to redo that. And then the study sessions, and this is important here as well, because these, now some of you in Oklahoma, Indiana, South Dakota, you've already watched some of these, but if you'll scroll all the way down here, you'll see where I have had all of my, most of my study sessions are right here. And so, um, or go to the YouTube channel and you can, you can pick those up right here. So if you wanted to go and say, hey, here's some math problems. I've got a lady, um, hopefully you're on the, the call tonight. She had sent me an email. She's having some trouble with math. Well, guess what? You can go to these study sessions and just, again, just close. I don't know why those arrows want to populate open, but go down here to the study sessions and just scroll down here past all the course content and you'll see appraisal, encumbrance. Uh, here's three different study sessions where I did math that you could go over. Okay, I just wanted to kind of make sure that everybody knew that because sometimes your course is open and you get right here and you don't realize there's all of this other good stuff down below, okay? And then don't forget the additional resources, or references, pardon me, and here, just go over next to your pre-licensed course, select the drop-down arrow, and you'll see the course textbook is there, your flashcards, a lot of other information. And one last thing I will show you is there is an achievements tab right up here. And so when you uh, achieve uh, your course, you can download the certificate right there. Okay, so I think we are ready to to get started, I'm going to see if we have any questions out here first. So let me go out here and I'll just, I think I have the, so I do not see any questions here. So, oh, there is, hello there. Thanks for joining us. I see uh, one of our students there that just said hi. I think you're a student. Your name looks familiar. Um, so, Victoria, right? Is that, is that correct? <laughs> okay, good. All right, so I hope I pronounced your name correctly there. Okay, so I am going to pull up the flashcards and we will get started here. Sorry, it took a little bit of time, but I wanted to make sure everyone was on board with me, so. Do a little bit of housekeeping there. All right, so I think we're good to go. So I am going to go back out here to my iPad. Minimize that screen down. And um, you can, this is my iPad here. And it, the same thing would be on your phone. So when you download these, there's a little play button right here. So I'm going to hit, whoops, I did something wrong there. Let's see if we can bring that back up.
Okay. So again, you want to click that little play button right up there. So I'm going to hit the play button and that will bring us up for our first definition. Now we talk about these definitions in the, um, close my little timer down. I try to be, I try to uh, do some productive timing, <laughs> timing issues when I focus on certain things. So that's my little timer and I try to work on, on different projects, whether I'm prospecting or doing other, other key uh, items. But let's talk about land. Uh, is, this, is this one of those definitions that you're going to have to really know for, for the exam? You know, I think we, we go over this in the course pretty well. The key thing you need to remember about land, the definition of land, and I'm going to get my little, um, my little um, pin right here, um, is that it, you know, there's this word right here, natural. It's a natural items. I guess I've got a typo there. But it's the natural things, okay? The natural items, trees, crops, water, anything that's natural, that's going to be the key that you need to know there, okay? Now, real estate takes that one step further because it's not only the natural items, but it includes the um, it includes the man-made items okay so the the key for real estate is natural plus man-made so we've had some questions in there you know a house you just have to kind of pick through those and look at some of the items and determine. But again, if you see uh, land natural, keep that in mind, that's the big deal. So you're looking for bushes, trees, rocks, and so forth. Real estate takes that one step further and it's natural plus man-made. And then real property not only takes the, uh, the natural items and the man-made, the house, the barn, the fence, but it also, look at this, includes the interest, benefits, and rights, okay? So this would also include the rights. So just remember land natural, real estate natural, man made, and real property takes all of those together. Will you see that on the exam? The, you know, I haven't seen a lot of that, of those questions, but I think that's really something you can kind of put that in your memory bank and you should be okay with that. Now, remember, you could, I have seen a question. Um, regarding alloidal, feudal. You remember what I said, alloidal, it's what we have in the U.S. And, and I tie the A to America. Okay, so just remember if they're asking you which system is the king and which one resembles the U.S. or, or the United States, just remember that A for Eloidio and America. So that's what we have in the U.S., right? There you go. So just tie that A with America, and you should remember that easily. So if you see the king, it's a feudal, and we'll see that here in just a minute. Now, an appurtenance, and this is a bunch of stuff here, but here's what you just need to remember. Appurtenances are things like rights of way, easements, water rights, condominium par parking stalls. You know, when you're studying for the test, I want you to remember that, you, you know, you'll see a lot of stuff like that, and I probably, I'm going to be 
This is another one of my projects I'm trying to do is to make this a little bit more simplified. But when you see appurtenances, you just need to think of a right or an interest in something. And that could include an easement. It could include water rights, property improvements. All of those would be appurtenances. Now, again, Feudio, we know this is the king. This is back when the king owned all of the land, okay? Why, do, why are we going to pick up on that? Because if we saw Eloidio, we would put the A with America, right? Free, that's where you and I have property rights. Individuals have property rights. That's what we have in America. And we just look for that A for America, Eloidio. The F, Feudio, is the king. And you could, you could say, well, the F and the, key, the K are pretty close in the alphabet together. But I generally can distinguish the two and immediately know what the answer is. So, uh, but again, just to, to make sure you understand this, the concept of the feudio system is basically the king owned all of the property and they leased, uh, or, or you and I over in England and some of those places, were, we were just tenants. We didn't have the right to own the real estate because the king owned all of it and we became just a tenant of the property. Remember bundle of legal rights, that's your right to do what? To sell it, to lease it. You could also encumber. Now what's encumber mean? Encumber, remember encumber? That's when you, um, you know, if you take a loan out on your property, you've just what? You've encumbered it. You've, you have, it now has a lien on it. Uh, it's an encumbrance. Remember that? If you um, have a tax, if you don't pay your taxes, you get a tax lien put on your property. That's another encumbrance, okay? So uh, going back to this here, you can sell your real estate, lease it, encumber it, take a loan out on it, use it, enjoy it. You can even exclude people and devise. That's where you leave it to someone in your will. This, these are all part of your bundle of legal rights. Pardon me about that. Your bundle of legal rights, okay? So just remember all those things you have the right to do. Now, chattel, chattel is what we call, <coughs> excuse me, personal property. Chattel is personal property. And remember, personal property is movable. It's movable. Now, a lease is an example of chattel real. And Remember this, this could be something that, you know, this is important for you to understand. How is personal property transferred through a bill of sale? Okay, very, very important there. But don't forget, chattel equals personal property. Okay, again, personal property, it's movable. Don't forget, bill of sale is what you use to transfer personal property. And then we talk about the fact that, remember through severance, a tree is real property while it's rooted in the ground, but when severed, severance, it is transformed into personal property. When lumber is assembled, however, and used as material to construct a house, it once again becomes a fixture. So you could see some questions there. And this is just talking about severance. It's, uh, you know, just what we talked about. You cut a tree up and it's firewood, right? Your severance there. Uh, when a fence is torn down, you could also take bricks out of a fireplace and stack those up those all become personal property at that point because they're movable. 
and then a fixture. A um, couple of things, and you could very well see a fixture. I was thinking maybe I'd trade fixture next. Here we go. Uh, what's the difference between a, a trade fixture and a fixture? A trade fixture and a fixture. Well, remember this. A fixture is something that's been so attached to the real estate that it is now considered a part of the real estate. Curtain rods. Um, normally, blinds and curtain rods, they've been attached to the property. Those would, be, those would stay. They would be considered a fixture. A dishwasher is movable, but when it's put into the, into the countertop, you know, into the cabinets under the counter, it's it's now become a fixture. And, and hopefully you, you know, a couple of the examples I gave you in chapter two made some sense there as far as the method of, a, a, the method of attachment, how the courts look at a fixture. And we use that acronym called MAID, M-A-I-D, the method of attachment, the annexation of the article, um, or the adaptation of the article, pardon me, annexation, I'm off on something else, something else there, the adaptation of the article, and I gave you an example of the gazebo in our backyard, it's totally movable, and, you know, I could come in and have somebody put that on a trailer and take it with me if we sold the house, which we're not selling our house, however, it's right there by our fish, our koi pond, and I'm pretty sure the courts would say, you know what, that gazebo pretty much adapted the adaptation of that with the koi pond and the patio and the way it's right up, butted right up against the sidewalk and everything. That's, that's a fixture, even though it's totally movable. The courts would probably say that's a fixture. Sometimes you get into that with these big water fountains or bird baths that are out in front of the property. So, you know, the best way to do that's always specify in the contract whether that stays or does not stay. But there are some things that the courts could come back and say, you can't take that with you. That's, that's a part of the real estate. So we have the, the method of attachment it's bolted into the walls. The adaptation of the article, just what I talked about. The intention of the parties, M-A-I, intention of the parties, you know, and then did agreement, did an agreement exist? So um, they're going to look at those items, but that's our fixture. Now let's go back here to trade fixture because this is a little bit different. A trade fixture, we're going to notice here, is personal property that's been annexed or affixed to leased premises by the tenant as a necessary part of the tenant's trade or business. At the termination of the lease, a tenant must have most fixtures in the premises, however, a tenant must leave. However, trade fixtures are removable by the tenant. So we're talking about we're talking about something like a freezers or coolers or any of those shelving that they put up as a trade fixture. Those can be removed when very important here before the lease expires before the lease expires all right the, their cons, trade fixtures are considered personal property now if if they fail to do this before the lease expires, then the landlord gets to keep the, the, uh, the, the trade fixtures. 
and they get that through what is called a session, which is our next term here. That is the acquisition of title, which was land or improvements or trade fixtures. So we're going to talk about, uh, you know, a session as we go down the road in the course. Um, and, and you can see some other examples of a session, but a trade fixture is also how the landlord acquires the, pro the property. And that's if what? If the tenant fails to remove the trade fixtures, then the landlord gets to keep it. And that's just another way of a session. And we'll talk about a session as we go through as well. Okay, I am going to come back over here real quick and just see if we have any questions. So if you have any questions, be sure and type those in. I do not see any questions right now. So we will go right back over here and talk about fee simple title. Fee simple title. Here's the key. You know, again, I can hit the next button and you have tons of stuff here. Um, but here's what you need to know about fee simple title for the test. And, and as they, I don't care what kind of questions they give you, you'll be able to dig through that and find out this is what they're talking about. And fee simple is the best type of ownership. It's the best type of ownership you can have. So as you read through the question, if they're telling you that this person's getting, you know, has the, the best, you know, whatever the question says, if you read through that and say, well, they've got, you know, this is the best form of ownership a person could have, it's fee simple title, okay? So, um, you know, there's lots of stuff into, in here, but again, this is what I would put in my notes. Look for the best type of ownership a person could have. It's fee simple title, okay? Now, fee simple defeasible, look at this. You could, you could almost, you know, put this as defeated, but it's defeasible, then there's a catch, isn't there? There's something that's making this not quite as good. So, you know, in other words, you could never sell alcohol on the property. You could, it always has to be used for a church. If there's something that's not quite up to par, it's not the best type of ownership, then it's fee simple to feasible. Now, I don't think they're going to get into, uh, I, 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 in the course I talk about qualified fee and a condition subsequent. I haven't seen anything on the test on that for a while, so I wouldn't worry about that or heard about that. You do need to know about life estates and you need to understand how a life estate works. And so I'm going to kind of go through this very quickly here for you. And I think I will come out here and I will go to an app and we will just pull this up so I can draw a little bit for you on here. So one of the things you'll need to know about life estates, there's several players in a life estate. We go through this in the course. If you're new in the course, don't let this upset you. You're going to get to this point. It's probably good for you to watch it, okay? So don't panic there. But when we have someone who owns real estate, so I'm going to just draw some, some folks here. So I'm going to say that this is... Um, Bob and Mary, all right? And they own, they own a farm. So we have Bob and Mary, they own a farm. Now, let's just come over here and let's just say they have a son named Ronnie. 
they want to they want to deed this farm to Ronnie. So they want to give him a a deed. They're going to give him a life estate. And so with this life estate on the farm, Ron, uh, so Ronnie, and I'm going to just change some colors here, Bob and Mary would be what we call the grantors. The grantors created the life estate and they, they gave this life estate to Ronnie. So we could say Ronnie is the grantee. He received it. But in this example, Ronnie would also be called the owner of the life estate. Now, Ronnie can do anything he wants to. I mean, he's the owner of the life estate, so basically he has these you know, uh, to some degree, a bundle of legal rights, but he has a bundle of rights, we could say here, which means Ronnie can, he can sell, he could lease it, he could go take a loan out on it, he could actually even give it to somebody if he wanted to, um, I mean, Ronnie can do all of these things he wants to because he's the owner of this life estate. Now, in the typical life estate format, if Ronnie dies, this reverts back to the grantor. Okay, it would revert back to Bob and Mary. So basically, in this example, Bob and Mary are saying, look, son, Ronnie, we want you to have the farm and we're going to give it to you in, in the form of a life estate, which because that protects them so that if Ronnie dies, the property automatically reverts back to Bob and Mary. OK, um, so that's one way of a life estate right there. Now, let's move over and just take another look here and change some of the players. In this example, we're going to have Bob and Mary. And they are going to grant a life estate to Ronnie, their son. the farm. Now, let's say not only does Bob and Mary have Ronnie, but they also have another boy named uh, Chucky. We'll just say they like to name their kids with end in IE, okay? So, who are Bob and Mary? You've got to remember these. They're the grantors. Ronnie is the owner of the life estate, okay, and Chucky is going to be what is called a remainderman. All right, now remember, Ronnie owns the life estate, so he can sell it, he can take a loan out, he can do all, lease it, do all those things, but when Ronnie dies, what happens to the property? Well, remember in this example, when Ronnie died, it reverted back to the grantor, Bob and Mary. But we did not have a remainderman here. So in this example, when Ronnie dies, it go, the life estate goes to the remainderman. Now, at this point, when Chucky gets it, and you might see some test questions like this, he's going to own the property in fee simple. I mean, it's his. The life estate's over with, and so Chucky now gets the property, and it's, he has a fee simple title. The life estate's over with. Now, 
why did Bob and Mary want to do this? Because they said, look, Ronnie, you're the oldest son. We want you to have the farm, but whenever you die, we want Chucky, your little brother, to have it because we just gave him a couple acres and he really deserves the big farm. So Chucky now, he, he was a remainderman. He owns the property in Fee Simple and everything's over with. So the question comes up, question always comes up, why would somebody want to buy a life estate or why would somebody want to uh, give a loan to Ronnie on a life estate? Well, you know, that's when they do the title search and we talk about that in chapter 14, right? They would discover those things and they may not want to purchase the property. They may not want to make a loan, but... Um, I do a lot of training and speaking, so a lot of conferences that I uh, speak at sometimes are in Las Vegas. Um, it's not one of my favorite places to go. I mean, I like to see the lights, and it is, there is, you know, it is fun to go there, but after like a few hours, it's like a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, and you always have to walk through the casino to get to the elevators to the hotel. But um, I'm always amazed when I go to Las Vegas and I see these people just gambling big f amounts of money. Why would somebody buy a life estate? I don't know. Why does someone go and gamble a lot of money in Las Vegas? It's just part of what people do, I guess. So um, I don't have an answer for that. And you're not going to be tested on that on the, on the exam, okay? And some of this has changed a little bit in how people do this. I know my good friend Wayne, who's probably on the call tonight, he's an attorney and a very good attorney. And, you know, Wayne could probably explain this better than I could, but some of this was used for avoiding probate or for estate planning purposes. In Missouri, we have a much better way to do that now through what's called a beneficiary deed. And so with a beneficiary deed, you it, everything can be avoided through probate. So anyway, uh, you, you're not going to have that on the exam, but you are going to have this right here. You need to know these kinds of situations. So remember, in our first example, there was no remainderman. It reverts back to the grantors. But you do need to know who the grantor is, who the grantee is, who the owner of the life estate is. And you need to know that if there's a remainderman, it's going to go to them when the owner of the life tenant dies. And at that point, the life estate's over with and Chucky would be the... Um, would own the property in fee simple estate. Now, let's go one more scenario. We have, I'm going to have to look. Is it Bob and Mary? Yeah. Bob and Mary. They own a farm, right? And they, through a deed and a life estate, they grant a life estate to Ronnie. And remember, they are the grantors. And then we have Chucky, the younger brother, who's the remainderman. Now, Ronnie is the owner of the life estate. Okay, he's a life tenant. The owner of the life estate. They grant Ronnie the life estate. Now, we could have down here Carol, who's a sister. And in this case, Carol is going to be Poratreve. I hope I spelled that right. Poratreve. 
Remember, this is for the life of another. In other words, everything's based on Carol's life. So when Carol dies, because it's based on her life, the way they set this life estate up, when Carol dies, then Ronnie's life estate ends and it would go to the remainderman, in this case, Chucky. All right? Sometimes you could have the Poratra Ve being Bob. So if Bob dies, the dad, he's the Poratra V in this case, then the property would revert back to mom if there was no remainderman listed. And that's how I kind of have seen these examples is, you know, hey, son, we want to give you the life estate for the farm, but if something happens to me, we're going to base this on my life. If something happens to me, then your life estate's over. You, the farm needs to go back to your mom because she's probably going to need to sell that to help support herself. Does that make sense? That's where you see that a lot today. So anyway, um, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense for you there. Now I'm going to just see if we have any questions. I thought I had Let's see here. If anybody has a question, feel free to mention that. Let me see one quick thing here. just so I can see this a little bit better. Okay, I do not see any questions right now. I thought I had a... All right, so you must be doing okay. I don't see any questions. Hopefully we're broadcasting. If anybody else is watching, you can maybe type something in and I'll know that we are broadcasting loud and clear. So, all right. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here and... All right, so we were on Grand Tour, and actually we were on Life Estate. So hopefully you got the purpose there of Life Estate. Uh, Grand Tour, uh, I try to remember this, you know, and the Grand Tour is the seller. <laughs> you know, try to remember that. Grantee is buying. So the grantor is a person transferring title. Now again, remember in our example of the life estate, the grantor is the person who granted the life estate. Pour atreve, or V, probably pour atreve. They took phonics out of school when I was a kid. Here's what you need for, the, for another's life. So I kind of drew that out for you. Uh, the life estate that is measured by the life of a person other than the grantee. So remember, in our example, Bob and Mary, we're writing at an angle here, they created a life estate. They were the grantor and the life estate was Ronnie who's a grantee. And in this Parater Ve, for a, it's based on the life of a person other than the grantee. So that would be this, in our example, we had Carol, right? Was the Parater Ve. So when Carol dies, 
the life estate dies, and it either is going to revert back to the original grantors, or if there's a remainderman, it would go over to the remainderman. Here's our remainderman. It's the one who's entitled to take an estate in remainder after the termination of a prior estate, such as a life estate. Uh, and then please note the remainderman owns the property outright after the death of the life tenant or, I should add there, or if the poor atreve, if, if one is mentioned. Okay? They own it outright, which is another thing we talked about, fee simple. Okay, a couple more and we'll call it a, uh, a night. Um, you know, you could see questions on dower and, uh, you know, this is um, the wife the wife's rights after her husband dies, and the courtesy is the uh, husband's interest in the property after his wife dies. I would make sure you know those. Um, and we wanna make sure you also know community property. Uh, severalty, rem remember the key here, this is, uh, we're talking about ownership S for single, single or sole ownership. Okay, and remember that corporations take title in severalty. So I always just like to align that S for single or sole ownership. I know it seems weird because several means more than one, but if you can somehow connect the dots with the S, I think you'll do good there. Um, and then corporations also take property in several T because they are considered a single entity. And I like to point this out. If you see uh, ABC Inc. Because I had a student one time and they said, what does Inc. mean? Well, that's incorporated. And you know, not everyone has, a, has had a lot of business knowledge and I get that. So I just want to point that out because the exam writers love to use ABC Inc. or, you know, Jones Inc. Inc. Well, if they use the word Inc, I-N-C, that's a corporation. And so you have to remember they are a single entity. So they would take title to property in severalty. Okay. All right. Well, it is almost nine o'clock. And uh, we'll, we'll pick back up this next week on some more definitions. A couple of quick things I do want to mention to you. I'm going to go out and see if we have any questions before I uh, go back here. Um, there we go. Okay. I do want to make sure that um, if there are any questions out here that I answer those for us. So I do not see any right now at this time. A um, couple of things I do want to mention to you uh, as we wrap up here tonight. Number one, um, it's a tough test. I say that over and over again. Now, it's not tough in that um, you can't, I don't want you to think you that it's unstop, that, that it, no one's going to, you know, no one's going to pass it. My pass rates have been very good. I want, I'm always want to be very transparent. November, we were down a little bit. I was a little bit discouraged and, and um, you know, I hate to use the words frustrated, but I was a little discouraged because we were down a little bit. But here's the deal I want you to understand. If 
you think that you can just lightly study and go in and take the test and pass it, it's not going to happen. And I mean that to people who are pretty good students. I mean people who've made A's and B's and all of their college courses, they think they can just kind of lightly skim over this stuff and they're going to go in and pass, pass the test. It doesn't work that way. There's just a lot of material and the questions are worded really challenging. So I really want to encourage you stay in this material as often as you can. You've got to be reviewing. You have to use those flashcards. You have to know the definitions, but you've got to really put the time in. And if you do that, you're going to do well and you're going to pass the test. Now, second thing I want to mention to you is this. Um, and I want you studying for the real estate exam. I'm going to be sending an email out hopefully in the morning or later tonight. Um, I started a um, coaching program and this is free for all of my students. You have to be a global real estate school student uh, to get this for free. It, there is a charge if you're not a global real estate school student. But I'm recording these and you'll have access to these. I really don't want you watching it until after you pass your test, but I just want you to know if you receive an email, I want to invite, I'm going to invite you to these. But we started our first session um, starting, I'm starting on business planning. This is, this is off my book, Five Minutes to Jump Starting Your Real Estate Career. There may be seven, eight, ten different sessions. I'm going to take you through prospecting, building your sphere of influence, how to use technology. We're talking about building your business plan. It's going to be pretty extensive, and um, but it's free for my, for you guys, for global real estate school students. So if you receive an email on that and you want to watch it tomorrow, that'd be great. Don't panic if you don't want to watch it. It's going to be available for you after all of the recorded sessions after you pass your test. But I just want you to know, my my real goal is that you pass your pass your test on the first attempt, right? But more than that, I want to see you succeed as a real estate professional. I really want to see you do great. And this is something that's been on my heart for a long time and I'm excited about doing it. And um, I thought the first session went really good. And again, I, as I mentioned earlier, kind of been derailed the last couple of weeks, but we're going to get back on it. And I'm probably going to try to do something tomorrow afternoon and uh, or Saturday, but I will send an email out to everyone and give you the uh, link for that as well. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Study hard. You know, if you just signed up for the school, I want to tell you this is a great time to be studying. I know it's Christmas time. However, you want to be up and ready to go the first of the year. So uh, it's a great time to do that. Finally, <clears throat> let me mention this to you. Um, be sure and go to my YouTube channel. And I probably need to, probably need to, I thought maybe I could stream something over there, but for some reason it's not showing up. I don't know what happened there. Let's see real quickly. I think I know what happened and I'll fix this right now. Here we go. I just want to show you this because this is really important here. All right, so I want you go be sure and go to YouTube and uh, what you want to do when you go to YouTube, if, if you go out there, you can just search for Global Real Estate School, right like that. And uh, you want to go out here to Global Real Estate School and you want to subscribe. So be sure and subscribe. And then you can see we're live right now, but there are tons of videos that, that I'm putting out here and all of my podcasts are out here. 
And as I hear about an exam question, um, I'm actually putting these out online. Let's see here. I thought that had the, we'll see if this one right here. I definitely, I know I have that. YouTube's always moving some things around here. And I know I had the question, oh, here we go, show more. <laughs> right in front of me. Um, these are questions I hear about. So I go over these on the podcast. So um, just encouraging you to, to go out, if you could, to uh, YouTube, subscribe to the channel. And I'm putting a lot of new content up here with, um, with questions that I, people come back and say, hey, I saw this question on the test. So again, just go to YouTube and look for uh, Global Real Estate School, subscribe, and um, there's lots of videos there. I have lots of playlists. And if you want to as well, if that's too challenging for you, uh, go to globalrealestateschool.com. So here we are right here. And right over here, you can access my YouTube channel. So all of my videos are right here. And um, I have math tips. I have these broken out. I'll have like today's webinar will show up here. I've been doing some Oklahoma. And you can also listen to the audio only right there. So either way, you can go out to Global Real Estate School or you can go to YouTube. And then finally, if you, um, if you have on your phone, go to iTunes and here just search for Global Real Estate School. Let's see. I think I want iTunes podcast. That's what we want. Podcast. So iTunes podcast. And here you would search for global real estate school. And you could usually have an app for your phone. And I don't know why that's not popping up, but maybe I'm searching in the wrong spot there. But it's it's there, it's easier to find that on your phone. And uh, this is interesting. So it should be under education. Global. Let's see, just when I'm gonna find out if it's there or not. I had global. I was going to say there's no way they could have all of those there. But anyway, if you search for global real estate school on your phone, it'll show up because I have have. Hmm. Well, it's I know it's late for you guys and you're probably wondering. But uh, I do have, uh, those are just looking for apps, but anyway, it's there. But you can also listen to all of the podcasts right here. Well, it's late, and I know you guys want to get to bed. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your business, and always reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching, and have a great evening. Good night.